Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. He's right there when you need him most. Matthew 14, verse 27 says, But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Sometimes we don't need Jesus. We're smart, talented. We can make decisions on our own. We can solve problems on our own. Our education prepared us to be successful. Our upbringing taught us to be able to overcome challenges and to go over hurdles. If we have enough money, we can live a good life, which is why we invest, which is why we work so hard to gain the salaries that we do, which is why we buy the lottery tickets when the prize reaches millions of dollars, which is why we align ourselves with successful people so that we can be equally successful. We've got this business of life figured out. We can make it if we try. So, respectfully, we don't really need Jesus until. It is the until moments, my friends, that brings us to a place of fear. It is the until moments that we never envisaged that catch us in desperate need that we sit and say, what do I do now? Do you know those moments? When education and associates and money and your own wisdom can't get you out of the dreaded and unexpected troubles? Man, you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you have had one of those moments when everything you've tried comes up short and you simply don't know what to do. But you do know what to do. You have one last card. You have one thing that you haven't yet tried. That one thing left to do is simply to look to Jesus, the Son of God. But who is this Jesus? Jesus is more than the one who fights over which day to worship. He transcends the petty things that divides us that we get hung up about. Jesus has important things to do like bringing out the stars each night and calling them by name. Jesus, who is the creator, never runs out of power and strength. Jesus is the way maker when there seems to be no way. Jesus not only speaks to storms and tells them, be still. Jesus not only made water, he walked on water. It doesn't get more impossible than that. Walking on water? That is unbelievable. But he specializes in the impossible. Let us talk about that some more. In Matthew 14, we find a narrative of Jesus walking on water, literally. On this occasion, Jesus was doing ministry around Galilee. And at the end of the day, he told his friends, the disciples, take a boat and go over to the other side of this huge lake. I will join you later. He was going to stay behind and take care of some business, including spending time in the mountain praying. Do you know that sometimes the unexpected happens in familiar situations? Well, here they are out on the boat cruising over to the other side when the sea got rough, really rough. I'm telling you, these fellas were not strangers to riding in a boat at night on the lake. But no one, no one expected rough seas that night. And that is just like life. You're doing life as you know how. You married the girl you love and things are going well when suddenly trouble steps into your marriage. Where did that come from? Or you're working on a project at your job, something that you are well equipped to do. Your boss has confidence in you to bring this project to a successful conclusion like you've done before. And out of nowhere, you hit upon a brick wall. Oh, you've recently got a report from your annual medical examination that all is well, 100% healthy. And then sometime later, you notice something like a, lump in your breast or a weird pain in your abdomen and and they tell you that you have stage two cancer these unexpected things happen to normal people in familiar situations that was what those disciples were facing that night the unexpected in a familiar environment 
It was while all this was going on that they saw the most bizarre thing. Something that looks like a person walking on water approaching them. Whoever first saw this phenomenon must have wet his pants in shock. All 12 of them were gripped in fear and collectively they agreed that it is impossible for it to be a person. So it must be a ghost. Well, if it is your imagination, if it is a ghost, what then? The text said that these 12 grown men, thinking that it was a ghost walking on water, cried out in fear. They see something or someone walking on the water. They think it's a ghost. Jesus heard their cry. He was not far from them. The last time they saw him was the day before when they saw him take five loaves of bread and two fish and catch this. He fed 5,000 men, not counting women and children. They witnessed that for themselves. But walking on water? Nah. But Jesus heard their cry of desperation and he revealed himself by speaking. Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. My friend, stop what you're doing for a moment. Your marriage is facing real trouble and you're panicking. Can you hear Jesus calling out to you, don't be afraid? Or that bad diagnosis that the doctor just told you about last week. He is saying, take courage. It is I, don't be afraid. I jump to the end of the story. One of them, Peter, had joined him on the water and the story concluded. When they, Jesus and Peter, climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Jesus knows your trouble. Jesus hears your cry. Jesus knows the end from the beginning. He is coming towards you. Will you let him climb into your boat? Will you trust him to calm your storm by climbing into your life? He loves to do these things. He is there for you when you need him most.